Brother Dana, Brother Maya, delivers you best worst case scenario. tales to raise the hairs on your neck. Join us tonight in the crypt as we explore Edgar Allan Poe. And Poe we shall. We shall... Poe all over this. (laughs) That's the first of many poop jokes we're going to make on this episode. How many Poe puns can we get in here? Into this episode... (laughs) <laughs> so many I cannot wait in It's a fact, lot of potential In fact I was I was super excited To cover this author Because he is The king of nightmares He's you, the, the captain of darkness You were excited or Not anymore Never more <laughs> uh, I was and I still am But I gotta say man Some dark <laughs> Dark shit in there Yeah Oh man, dark roast. Where do we even start? I don't know. Maybe we should start at the end of it all. Work our way back to when he was born. Okay, let's Benjamin Button this guy. Let's start when he's an old wrinkly baby, just forty years old. Yes. That's how old he was when he passed, right? He was thirty-nine or forty. Eighteen oh nine. Then he dies in eighteen forty-nine. Do do we know when he was born? No, month. we're starting at the end. I no, you I know. I was trying to do math oh. for you. <laughs> well, <God>. well, don't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm offended by your math. Get that out of here, man. So I think it was reported he was walking down the street in someone else's clothes. He had soiled himself, rubbed some poo-poo on the walls. No, that didn't happen, but he was delirious he was out of his mind he was talking about this guy reynolds and someone else and he was found in baltimore just wandering around lost like an old man that sounds like an average day poe to me does it yeah like that's probably what he was like every day of his life just out of it yeah why why do you say that well if you look at the shit that he wrote (laughs) I mean... You don't sound like a big fan, Dana. Maybe, maybe part of it is because I don't understand some of the words. And if I (laughs) understood every fucking word he said, then maybe I'd appreciate it more. The rhyming got me, too. (laughs) It really got me. The raven. Where are you? What was her name? Uh, Annabelle? My Annabelle. My Annabelle Lee. (laughs) When will I hold my Annabelle Lee, Annabelle Lee? You can't rhyme with the same word. You can't just repeat the same word and rhyme it. I don't think that counts. Yeah. Bubbly. (laughs) Belly. Wow, man. I'm a poet. You're the next Poe protege. (laughs) God damn. I'm a poet and I know it. Okay. I got to say, though, I disagree with you. I. What do you disagree about? When I first started reading his stuff, it was dark and you know me i like lighter fluffier stuff man and so at first it was a little jarring and i remember thinking like geez this stuff is is fucked up but the more i read his stuff the more i kind of got into it and i gotta say that while i might not be a fan of the guy himself and we'll get into this later i think that his work was very imaginative and it transports you into the most wild dark places that i believe he had some glimpses into the human psyche as an alcoholic as a dude who had a really tough life i think that he had access to these places of his psyche that were so dark and when you read a stuff like the black cat or the pit in the pendulum <laughs> okay any of his work you start to see this glimpse of just how messed up he was but let's let's continue with our with our christopher nolan movie so they found him on the streets of baltimore he was was, on a bench right staring up at the sky 
dead or not dead, dying. Somebody found him. <laughs> they brought him into a hospital where he died three days later, four days later. And the cause of death, they don't know. They don't know. No. Uh, they they, they th- speculate, but it wasn't. A lot of <laughs> they don't know if it was alcohol poisoning or probably was uh, alcohol related because he was a binge drinker. He was. Yeah, he would go on <laughs> very long binges and. He drank himself to death is what some people speculate. But the, his actual death is because he stopped drinking. You know that? That's a fact? Potentially. It's actually very likely because he exhibited signs of being cut off from alcohol. If you cut somebody a binge drinker off, then they can develop very life-threatening symptoms. Wow. You guys heard it from Dana. So you got to keep Don't drinking. Don't stop drinking. Keep drinking. You'll die if you do. <laughs> yes. Keep chugging. Sounds like a made up thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Sounds like an alcoholic's uh, excuse. Okay. I gotta keep drinking. <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna die if I stop. So they found him in the hospital. Or they found him on the bench, put him in the hospital. He died three they days. They didn't find him in the hospital. <laughs> no. You're making him sound like the Joker? <laughs> like he has the plan? They found him he, in the hospital. He pretty much was the Joker. In man. a nurse's outfit? Read his work. He was the Joker. He went full Heath Ledger. You know, mm-hmm. um, and so he died. And some reports say that the, his last words were, "Lord, help my poor soul." Yeah, I don't think the Lord is gonna help him. Why is that? Uh, I have my reasons, but <laughs> he, I think he died from cardiovascular collapse. Wow, what? What's that? I don't know, <laughs> but that's what I read. <laughs> It's actually checks it's, out. It's one of the symptoms of uh, delirium tremens, which is basically made from, up word. No, it sounds like a Harry Potter character, doesn't it? Delirium tremens. Delirium tremens. Yeah, uh, it's from heavy binge drinking. When when you stop, suddenly stop, you can develop symptoms of profound confusion, which sounds like his daily life. Hallucinations, which is also him. Tremulousness, so he's shaking. Uh, sweating, which I think he sweat a lot. Because <laughs> he wore the same thick he's suit. He's wearing day. thick suits. And cardiovascular collapse. And one in ten people die from this today. I didn't know that. One in ten people yeah. on the planet yeah. die from that? No, who, who are binge drinkers. Oh. And they develop delirium tremens. Even with modern health care, there's a chance you'll still die. Even wow. though you're in the hospital and they're trying to help you, your whole system just collapses when you just cut off alcohol. But back in Edgar Allan Poe's day, one in three people would die. So if you were a binge drinker and you just stopped, you're likely going to die. Man. And so he was pronounced dead on October 7th today that we're releasing this. Isn't that crazy? October 7th? Nevermore. <laughs> Nevermore. <laughs> Nevermore will he write again. And do you have more to say on his death? Eventually. <laughs> okay. Well, he was most notably a writer. And today that's what we know him as. A poet. And also a master of criticizing other people. In fact, Which is funny because he hated criticism. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> well, he worked as a magazine editor. I think it was for the Southern Literary Messenger, which was a magazine in Baltimore, Massachusetts. And he got a reputation for tearing people up. But people tore him up, too. And then he wrote darker shit because he felt torn up. <laughs> yeah, but I think he started it. He was like that kid who could dish it out but couldn't take it. But he would probably criticize people's work in a really eloquent, classy, not classy, goth macabre sort of way. (laughs) Well, he did. And to give you an example, this was his literal quote about the works of James Fenimore Cooper. It is simply impossible to make out by what species of perverseness Mr. Cooper has been able to retain the enormous reputation in which he undoubtedly glories. His five novels... The Prairie, The Pioneers, The Pilot, The Red Rover, and The Spy 
are the very worst productions of any which ever emanated from the pen of man. In that day, that was like, that was a mic drop, man. That was a, a James Fenimore Cooper felt that. I'd almost want a cr- critic review from Poe. That was kind of cool. <laughs> it's a little harsh, but. From the pen of a man. <laughs> yeah, the worst. But that guy must have wronged him personally for him to do that. Maybe. Or that guy said some shit about him. And I think had beef. A I lot think, of beef. I think maybe Poe just had. Where's the beef? He just had a uh, a beef with the whole world for everything because from a young age, everyone <laughs> around from a young age, everyone around him either died, all the women he loved died, and the men were kind of dicks to him. He didn't have a father figure, and he had yeah he had re he had reason to be a dick or sort of what he was, but not uh, not an okay. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? I'm just saying it doesn't give him permission to be a little little hurt butthole yeah. screaming at people. No, no, you're right. You're right. But, Look at Hitler. But he kind of looked like Hitler, man. Yeah. If he had a little, little mustache. Okay, I got to say, though, from an early age, his mom died when he was like two, I think. He was adopted. His new mom died. His best friend's hot mom died. Stacy's mom. Uh, <laughs> it's just. Funny. And then okay. his his adopted dad <laughs> slept around while his foster mom was dying. <laughs> and the other interesting thing is he was a regular Lance Armstrong with two balls because when two he ball? with the, when he was a little boy. Don't we all have two balls? <laughs> except Lance. Oh. He swam. <laughs> Six miles up a river against a current. Makes you wonder where he would have been if he stuck with swimming. A Michael Phelps. A Michael Phelps <laughs> of his time. He could have been. Edgar Allan Poe would have been in the Olympics. Edgar Allan Porpoise. That would be his name. <laughs> yeah, so we're going backwards with his life, right? Uh, I kind of just started. You're it's doing, too hard to go backwards. You're doing the Christopher Nolan thing where you start at the end and then you flash forward to the beginning and then you go back again and you leave the listener confused or the reader. Or I the, think you're confused. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the audience, like <laughs> just wanting more. They just want to know where it goes. Yeah. Well, where does it go from here, man? Where does Poe go? He goes to, uh, he moves away from his homeland, his homeland of depression. Yeah, so he went to the University of Virginia. Mm, his that's dad, interesting. his new dad, sent him there with his, no money. His third dad, his new second dad. He had no dad, but then he had a foster dad, and his foster dad, who was sleeping around while his foster mom was dying, he sent Poe to the University of Virginia. Didn't have any money. Uh, Poe started gambling to try to get some money. He mm. ended up in debt. So he didn't have a good poker face. <laughs> I should have seen that one coming. So he got in debt and then he had to ditch town because the debtors prisons was a thing back then. Like you could get thrown in prison because you didn't pay your debt. Yeah. Which sounds kind of reasonable. <laughs> mm, I don't know. You know how many, seems kinda extreme. you know, you, I bet 90% of Americans would be in prison, debt prison right now. If that existed today. We would be doing this podcast from a prison. So. <laughs> I take it back. It's not logical. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he ditched town and he enlisted in the military with a fake name to avoid detection. Yeah. Do you remember his fake name? I don't know. It was Edgar A. Prairie Dog. <laughs> it wasn't Horace P. McTitties? No, this but was... his name was Edgar A. Prairie, as in Prairie Dog. Wait, really? Oh, I yeah. thought you were just being funny. No, it was Edgar A. Prairie. And I added the dog. <laughs> uh, well, that's why I riffed off of it. Okay. You don't just add a dog. I know. I'm glad you riffed off of it. So so he was in the military for a bit, got out, went to... He was a good soldier. How do you know that? I read things. What makes a good soldier? Does that mean he followed directions well? Yes. He was, he was disciplined. He showed up. He did the work. And he got out. 
Yeah, I guess that is what a he just left though too early. He didn't want to be there, but if he had stayed, he moved his way up ranks pretty fast too. Yeah. So this it's interesting because everything else he did in life, what he was really freaking good at. Like he was an excellent swimmer. He was a good soldier. Yeah, he's a good athlete. He's a a great husband. <laughs> oh well, let's get to that because after he left the military, he ended up in Baltimore, Massachusetts. And he lived with his aunt, Maria Clem, and his cousin, Virginia Clem. Virginia Clem, yeah. He married the girl that's named after the university he went to. He did. So that's where it gets kind of weird. And that is he ended up marrying Virginia Clem, who happened to be 13 years old at the time. And his first fucking cousin. Yeah. Like the cherry on top if things weren't bad enough. Oh, mm -hmm. here's a little more for you. They even you want some sprinkles on there. <laughs> no, but he even <laughs> falsified. He falsified the marriage documents to say that she was 21 to avoid, you know, like a right because it wasn't legal back then to do that. No, it was really weird, and he wrote these letters saying how madly in love before they got married to yeah. his aunt about his cousin. Yeah, because she was, Virginia was getting ready to move away. Yeah, Maria Clem, her mom, was getting ready to send Virginia away. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was because there was a creepy uncle, Pervin, on her. But they, she was going to send her away. And then Poe went into like a fit where he went on a bender, which he did a lot of those. He's the bender man we were talking about. <laughs> it's, it's actually Poe. Oh, it is Poe. Which just, is interesting. Just talking about it makes me want to drink. <laughs> Which is interesting because H.P. Lovecraft also was a fan of Poe. Yeah, yeah, it was actually a big inspiration. Yeah, and you oh. can see that in his writing. Like, he if you read it, it has a similar horrid, ghastly, similar, can't quite like, describe. Uh, like, boringness to it. You're just jealous, man. You wish you could write like Poe. I know. <laughs> I wish I could be that rhymey and timey. But H.P. Lovecraft, I think he wrote a whole story dedicated to Poe. Wow. That's that's real sweet. Know? That's real sweet. And you know what's not sweet is marrying your cousin. And I just got to say that for whatever else he has done, the fact is the man was... Uh, a pedophile. He was. You can't really get around that. Regardless of what you think about his writing, you know, some people don't know that. He was the man who never smiled. And uh, he did some bad things. Yeah. And then he wrote about it. He expressed it. I mean, bad things happened to him, sure, but he also was part of it. He wasn't He wasn't Spider-Man or Batman <laughs> where he's on one side. He was on, he was both. He was. So yeah, what happened then after he married his cousin, Virginia Clem, was they actually spent a lot of time together, apparently happy, yeah. and then apparently. the dreaded consumption came, which is another word for tuberculosis. Or the Great White Plague. Is it that's what it's called? That's what it was termed back in the day. I didn't day. know that. Yeah. Wow. So yes, uh, she got consumption and they knew. It sounds like she just started drinking <laughs> too. <laughs> no, she wasn't old enough she to drink because she was just a kid. Yeah. So she, she got tuberculosis and for, I think three years, Poe had to watch her slowly die. I think it was five, five long years. I Torture. stand corrected. So he watched her slowly die took care of her the whole time, went on a few alcohol benders, but he was really poor. He was poor actually his whole life, and he didn't really have the money to keep her alive. Like, I don't know if that means he didn't have the wood to throw on the fire or like yeah. he couldn't pay he someone couldn't, to be with her. He couldn't keep a job too with his drinking. So it was really tough for him to get money. He didn't make things easier for himself. Clearly, no, no, especially when he would end up like scream at bosses and stuff, you know. <laughs> He's one of those guys. 
<laughs> Tell yeah. me how to do my job. And it's like day one. Fuck you. Now pay me. <laughs> Fuck you. Give me money. I need a drink. Yeah. Quote the Raven. <laughs> yeah. Put it on my ledger, and on my maybe, credit. And please. maybe Cusack nailed that. I because... swear I'll sell a thousand copies by tomorrow. <laughs> by a fortnight. Yeah. And I think Cusack might have nailed that part because we watched The Raven with John Cusack, who played Poe. And I got to say, it was. Oh, it was terrible. I hated it. It wasn't terrible because we watched the whole thing. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a less funny, more dark, and morbid Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, for sure. A Sherlock Holmes where the bad guy is an orangutan and murders two people. I'm you... talking about the murders of Rue de Morgue, I think it is. I might be butchering that, but... Sounds like you know it perfectly. Pretty much. It's like the first Sherlock Holmes detective story. Are you sure? Like where he's like, I could tell by the mustard on your jeans that you ate a sandwich earlier, which means you have heartburn, which means that you would like a glass of water. No, I didn't eat a sandwich. <laughs> I had a burrito. So, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And and he figures out there's these two murders that happen in Paris and the circumstances are so crazy that no one can figure out how the fuck the people were murdered because the escape and everything was airtight. People came up the stairs. There was no way for someone to get out. All the windows were closed and locked, and they, right. were, they were just like, how the hell did they do it? A monkey did it. <laughs> and literally. It's so easy. A monkey could do it. Sorry for the spoilers. If, if you haven't read Poe's work, you probably don't want to listen anymore, but... Tell us. An orangutan did it. How did it do it? He went ape shit. He had a <laughs> razor. Shit. He had a razor in his hand because he was watching his master shave. And so he was trying to shave like his master. And so his master accidentally let him out. And the orangutan leapt through the window with a razor and just ran all over town. And then it found a window that was open. And oh it went inside. And this mom and her daughter were there. And it just fucked him up. <laughs> orangutan style, man. <laughs> so how did the orangutan leave? Well, after it shoved one of them <laughs> up the roof or up the chimney, and then it pretty much cut the head off the other one and threw her out the window. Then it freaked out and leapt through the window. Right. And, and the window closed behind it and locked somehow <laughs> wow that sounds really elaborate but believable <laughs> like well, that's probably the top 10 scariest ways to die is a oh my god a tank jumps Honestly? through your window with a razor in its hand like <laughs> just a monkey <laughs> jumping through your window scary enough like Holy it's gonna fuck. rip your lips off and shit but yeah. with a razor my god yeah like how... they'll kill you in the most painful way monkeys yeah, they're evil. Like, they're so strong that they could just, like, rip your fingers off. Planet of the Apes. So, Monk anyways, Town. that's that story. Jungle and Book. Netflix is... is coming out with a the Fall of the House of Usher. And it's from the makers of the Haunted Hill House or Hill House, whatever it's called. And it looks <laughs> not very good. <laughs> And I hope I'm wrong. I hope it, it comes out and, it, and it's really good and people love it. But I watched the trailer with Dana and I'm not super impressed. It looks like any other Netflix show pretty much. I think the problem is I read The Fall of the House of Usher and the story itself, if, if any of you have read that, it has nothing really to do <laughs> with the show from what I could tell. Maybe it's the same family, but... The actual story, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you a brief rundown of the story so you guys know when this Netflix show comes out, this is kind of the backstory behind what they're making it about. So the story, sta start, <laughs> story starts off narrated by an unnamed protagonist who receives a letter from his childhood friend, Roderick Usher. The letter conveys Roderick's deteriorating mental and physical health. And his speech. And his speech. <laughs> and his urgent request for a visit. Concerned for his friend, the narrator travels to the Usher Mansion, which is located in a remote, desolate area. Right Upon next to the Wayne. <laughs> exactly. 
Upon arriving at the decaying mansion, the narrator is struck by its eerie and foreboding atmosphere. The mansion itself appears to be in a state of decay, mirroring the declining health <coughs> of the Usher family. Are you okay? Are you dying on me? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Inside, he finds Roderick Usher, who is pale, <laughs> nervous, and suffering <laughs> from an experience sensitivity to light, sound, and touch. Roderick informs the narrator that he and his twin sister, Madeline, suffer from a hereditary condition that intensifies their physical and mental ailments. Madeline, I said Madeline first, I'm just going to go with Madeline, is believed to be dead and is temporarily entombed in a vault beneath the mansion, awaiting burial in the family crypt. As the days pass, the narrator observes the increasingly erratic behavior of Roderick and the oppressive atmosphere of the house. Roderick becomes obsessed with the idea that Madeline is still alive. His fears are confirmed when Madeline reappears, seemingly risen from the grave, and confronts her brother. Like, why'd you bury me? I'd be mad too. Yeah, why'd you do it? <laughs> In a climactic and horrifying scene, Madeline collapses on Roderick and they both die. The narrator barely escapes the crumbling mansion as it slinks. Say as what? It sinks into, I feel like I'm hearing new words. <laughs> as it sinks into a dark tarn, which is a small stagnant lake, apparently. A tarn? A tarn. Oh, learn something every Fucking day. Fucking tarn. What's a slink, too? <laughs> I said sink. I oh. said sink, man. Oh. The story ends with the narrator fleeing the scene just in time to witness the complete collapse and submersion of the House of Usher into the tarn, sealing the tragic fate of the Usher family. That really makes me want to watch it now, doesn't it? Well, no, because it has nothing to do with what I just said. I know. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Really? It's that's why people who read books hate fucking movies and TV shows Dude. because directors never know how the fuck to make it. Like, yeah. what's wrong with them? Yeah. Do they do a bunch of cocaine first and then they're like, let's yeah. do this. I'm not like, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. not trying to say like Poe's work was amazing, but at least, at least make it true to the work. Yeah. I would like him to make like a new fucking, like a good Raven movie. The Raven. The one that we watched is called The Raven. Yeah, yeah. Not Although, the poem. Not the poem, but the the movie. Well, no, I'd want them to make it about the poem, The Raven, even though it's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. The rapping. I gotta say, that one's my favorite. A tapping. My a least, light twinkling tipping. That's my least. On my door. That's my, one of my least favorite poems by him, and that's the one that made him famous. Internationally famous. Right, and you know In, what? Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> He made nine dollars from that. Maybe up to fifteen dollars, but nine initially. Yeah, but nine or fifteen dollars from all of that? That's just terrible. Yeah. But he would go around and read that and people were transfixed. They were they were amazed at his rendition of it. Well oh, yeah. Kids followed him around on the street saying, Nevermore. <laughs> No, they would hit his heels with sticks. Oh my god. What is this Scrooge? And, yeah. Like a dark Scrooge where <laughs> they're all like cheering. Thank you very much. Just quoting much. death quotes by Edgar <laughs> Allan Poe. Yeah. yeah, they'd smack his heels with sticks and then he'd turn around. See, that doesn't... And he'd say, That doesn't more. exactly sound like fans to me. No, but it was a game. It yeah, was I'm sure fun. it was a game. I'm sure they were saying, your shit sucks. And they were tapping <laughs> his heels. And he's like, oh, they're in love with me. Oh, But really, you know what was going on. Uh, what is your favorite story or poem? That's a tough one because I can't remember a lot of them. <laughs> Actually, I think my favorite one, just because of the dramatized audiobook version, that I got was uh, Tale Tale Hearts. Oh, that was good. And maybe that one was chilling. What was the? Have other you one? noticed how a lot of his stories are about burying a dead body? Yeah, I wonder if he did that at some point, or if I he... think he wanted to do it because of how much he talked about. Like, and then I was with this body, and I had to hide it, and they would never find where I put it because I put it in the wall. That, that's interesting because he probably fantasized about all the stuff he wrote about doing himself 
But if he hadn't been a, been a writer, he might have done all this shit. Like, he could have been a Jack the Ripper of his time. <laughs> but, he did write some Rippers. But maybe he was, like, too scared of, like, the like uh, the police, man. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> They're going to get him. They're going to handcuff so, him. So. <laughs> and then things get all political. God damn it. God damn political. it. Political. <laughs> so, the weird thing, though, is, is what we're saying is he didn't just write about these killings happen, but he... In his stories, like Telltale Heart, Cask of Amontillado, Amontillado. God, it sounds like a fucking mixer that you go to, or okay, I got like a perfume. I gotta explain this. Just tell me what Amontillado is. So, is it like the fucking Catalina wine? I'm mixer? trying to explain it. <laughs> Let me talk. Is it so, like Balenciaga? So this dude plans revenge on this guy for no reason. We don't know why, and he. It's this Italian wine cellar, and he gets the guy to go with him down into these dark vaults by telling him, yes, I've come by an Amontillado, which is a super rare type of wine. But he's like, but I wanted you to check it because I have my suspicions. And so this guy goes with him down there, and as they're walking, he just keeps on saying, an Amontillado. There's no way. There's no way it's an Amontillado. I guess it is. And he was right because once they get down there, he he chains them to the wall and then he he builds a wall. <laughs> what does he, do next? he builds a wall. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Don't make this weird, Dana. It's weird enough. What does he do? He builds a wall <laughs> and walls him in. <laughs> no way. With a wall? He literally like buries him to entombs him alive, which With a wall. I think might be one of the wor- worst ways to go. What do you think? I don't know. I think I think the worst way to go would be an orangutan with an orangutan. <laughs> but what was that other one? There's no worse way to go. I would take burning alive or drowning over an orangutan any day. Because who knows how much it's going to fuck you up before you actually die. <laughs> but what, what was that one? Because there was another story called The Pit and the Pendulum. And that way the was pit. actually also pretty bad. And the pendulum. What was what was that one? Uh, this giant clock thing that took forever to get down to to kill this. Okay, but it's the French Inquisition, right? And they in they imprison this guy who was on the wrong side. Yeah, the French Inquisition led by like fucking Vladimir the Impaler. <laughs> and so they imprison this guy, but he wakes up in this dark chamber chamber and there was a rapping and tapping at his fucking door and then <laughs> these rats came a knocking and <laughs> they started swarming around his little his his little chained up bed and this giant uh scimitar that's attached to this clock was going downwards above him slowly jeez and it was just it couldn't have swayed slower. It's like a clock, one of those old grandfather clocks, you know, that swing back and forth, but it like, was my God. a sharp end. So it slowly came down with the time. With each minute that passed, mm-hmm. I think it but went super down slowly. slightly or every half an hour. So it would slowly and cut into it. He described it for like ten hours. I was coming down at him. <laughs> but and the was, rats I think it, No, it was a couple days he was describing it. <laughs> yeah, but the down. rats set him free. Right, because they were trying to eat him. Right. And they ate through his bandages. Yeah, that that's that shows you how fucked up his stories are. When the allies are rats trying to when eat the, you alive. You know you in a fucked up spot when the <laughs> rat's on your team, man. And it but, don't even but, know it. But when does it become a rat? <laughs> and when is it a mouse? <laughs> in the house? Yeah. That's some good shit right there. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, so I. So your favorite was my. I don't know if I have a favorite. I, I mean, to the Telltale Heart or whatever. I like the mask, the Red Death, Red yeah. Death one. You're not a huge fan of the poems, though, right? Like, I mean, his poems are they're they're rhymy. Do you think you could write a better one? Yeah, and I actually did. What? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> nah, I know. Okay, I gotta hear this. Edgar Allan Poe couldn't make enough dough to save his life, to save his wife from tuberculosis, the great white prognosis. Poe had too much to think, always had a drink, putting his head in a whirl, married an underage girl. It was his first cousin, only 13. You know Poe's soul was not clean. He was a pedophile. 
but I digress. This poem ain't my best. Thank you, Mr. Poe, for the dark tales and gore. But I think your tiny penis should be never more. Damn. Damn. That's a mic drop moment if you could drop your mic. We can't, though, because they're glued in to the table. And it's like a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, we ain't that rich. But holy shit, man. That was... That was powerful. I got I got chills. I was I had some beef with him, but in the end I said he he had some okay stuff. <laughs> yeah, you did after insulting him <laughs> completely. But hey man, I I agree. I actually have something for you also. And this is another poem from Mr. Poe that a lot of people might not know. No. <laughs> oh my and God. that's not part of it. But it's this. It's the start of it. In midnight's hush, a ghastly sound arose, a spectral rustling from whence no one knows. In shadowed chambers, dimly lit by moon, a tale unfolds, a tale of dread marooned. Upon a porcelain throne, an eerie sight, a substance foul bathed in unearthly light, a spectre of digestion's vile despair. (laughs) It it haunted me with its olfactory glare. The pungent stench, a scent of dread and woe, from deep within where foul contents grow. It rose in tendrils like a ghostly mist, a putrid fog in which nothing exists. Quoth I, nevermore, this wretched plight shall I endure, this foul and foul-smelling blight, for in the chamber, dark and dank and dire, I find myself consumed by hellish fire. With trembling hands I sought to flush away the dreadful specter in its murky play, but it still lingered like a cursed spell, a ghostly presence in the porcelain well. And as I fled fled that haunted lavatory, I pondered life's most gruesome inventory. For in that moment, I could but agree that poop indeed had conquered me. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, that's not Edgar Allan Poe. That came from the internet. But that's I I wish he wrote it. You know what? That's disgusting. It's about (laughs) Poe. It's about Poe taking a Poe. (laughs) And then he looked. And then he looked at his Poe, and he was like, you know. I think I should ride some mo. (laughs) And then he ran away. He totally left that. Man, what do you think, Dana? I think we should open our own poetry club. I think we should. It'll be like 12-year-old humor. Yeah, it will be like the poet and I know it foundation. (laughs) Nevermore, man. (sighs) Nevermore. That's Poe for you. It is. That's probably more Poe than you wanted. Because... I think that gives you a a brief, really bad retelling. But I seriously encourage you if if you are into like dark stuff in dark general, shit. then dark. look into his stuff because it's it's wild. It is wild how depressed he was first and how how long he lived. Like I imagine he'd be a, well, a lot older if he wasn't so depressed. Like he wouldn't have made it, but then we wouldn't have his work. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I don't know either, man. I'm just putting in filler. <laughs> but man. I think I'll save you. So, people, people thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Best Worst Case Scenario Podcast. BWCS. This was the first installment of Spooktober, and we're going to be back on Friday the 13th with another episode for you guys. Number two. I thought we just did number two. No, number two. (laughs) The real number two. That was number one with a little number two. (laughs) So, this is your host, Mayan. This is your host, Dana. (laughs) Remember to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify. Stalk us. We appreciate you guys. We do. We will see you again. Nevermore. Good night.